Hello everyone, today we talk about Christopher Columbus, right? We rarely concentrate on single historical figures, but I thought this would be interesting for, for many reasons. Not much because of the character himself, but because of the environment and the, the challenges and the, the events that, that uh, surrounded him in, in many ways. And, and that are often just, you know, told like the story of the discovery, um, also in modern policy, mostly about uh, his Columbus misdeeds, right? But what I find fascinating about this all is the perspective of what really did the old and the new world, um, right, um, were in a, at the time um, through this connection that that eventually would never end, right? It had never quite stopped. I mean, continents had never been completely isolated, right? leaving aside the, the obvious Vikings um, in North America, but uh, the in, in the previous centuries. But the, the fact that, uh, however, human societies did, did um, communicate in a way or another, there were many theories regarding to this. We will skip this because it's actually complicated. And we, we will maybe address it another time. But this is going to be naturally more a, a, a European perspective than, than the other way around. Um, and and yet, it, I, I think it makes you understand a lot of aspects that are generally, you know, and very controversial in some ways and, and thought-provoking at the same time. So, um, Columbus, I think, deserves... Uh, as an individual, really, the first place in, in the you know in the broader uh, a, age of explorations properly meant, right? That had begun before him and would end after him. Um, but definitely, his enterprise stands out as the most important and um, and, and the greatest turning point in, in this phase, right? Um, because albeit having definitely roots in the, the past explorations, it didn't stem, for example, from major theories such as the circumnavigation of Africa that would be accomplished in a few years, but rather f from certain theoretical problems, right, of geographical and of uh, even historical and philosophical, yeah, and even cosmic uh, nature that the that individuals like Toscanelli or Martins, uh, for example, had posed, right? These figures are quite important, especially their correspondence back in the day, because it had brought on the fore the idea of, uh, that the crossing of the ocean in order to reach by sea the eastern coast of Asia, that's what gave individuals like Columbus and his followers the you know, the idea, the thinking of w whether this could be uh, achieved practically, right? The, the problem was enormous at the time, because if the Europeans had reached the eastern coast of Asia, passing through the Atlantic, they would have bypassed the Arabs and the Turks um, in, and allowed them to import uh, pre the precious eastern spices by avoiding the Muslim uh, trade points, right, and, and, and geography, commerce, even religion, right, the idea of, of, of crusade, for example, were, were all one with this thesis, right, there was this great uh, dream, essentially, of bringing the, the, the Mongols, as we will see, that were still believed to, you know, to rule in China, even if they didn't, in there since a century anymore, against the common enemy of, of Christianity, and um, reopening the routes that had allowed, actually, the Europeans to reach quite intensively um, the Far East Asia in the 13th century, right, uh, on land at that point. But that had been a pretty intense uh, exchange that had left important marks in European culture, right. Um, Columbus himself was passionate about Marco Polo's um, account on the travel in, in China, the knowledge of uh, the Chipang, that is uh, Japan essentially, and therefore the possibility that by cro just by crossing the sea, uh, the Europeans could have had direct access to the, the enormous, to the fabulous riches of Asia, right? Without, uh, you know, which uh, at that point were precluded to them by these major powers that were there, such as the Ottoman Empire, but all, more in general, all these land routes that had. 
uh, I mean, all these land powers that had blocked the trade routes, right, after the disgregation of the Mongolian Empire, therefore exacting uh, tolls at every single, uh, you know, kingdom and uh, essentially contracting this intercontinental trade, right? And there would be a lot to expand in this regard. Uh, because if you read, for example, um, Toscanelli and Martin's um, uh, letters, you you can feel not just a theoretical um, speculation, right? The, in, in those lines, that it vib vibrates the enthusiasm of also for for those unknown lands, right? This this idea that there was a fascination with that far eastern world, that exotic uh, reality that uh, can be found even in those uh, hermetic texts, for example, that circulated in Florence, right, in, a, in the Neoplatonic uh, ideal uh, at the time. And that could that would be more even uh, directly appreciated with the European utopistic literature later on with Thomas More and Francis Bacon. Um, so, um, the... Mm, the main problem in, in this well um, cartographical, geographical, philosophical debates had been how far was actually Asia from Europe, right, uh, passing through the Atlantic, right? And there were a lot of, of you know, problems actually in assessing that. Um, cartography was actually developing pretty damn fast at the time, especially when you look at this southern European uh, lands, you realize between... Uh, places like uh, the Italian Maritime Republics, or Barcelona and uh, Sevilla, for example, it was this um, almost common Mediterranean um, in inquiry of um, you know nautical science and the and astronomy. If you think about the Portolani, these maps that f were finally now scientifically uh, drawn, right, and that achieved striking levels of precision for those time standards, and that had uh, developed from this uh, thriving commercial civilization of the South, which had uh, been based fundamentally on this uh, major maritime accomplishment uh, and achievements, and that was the one that, especially when the eastern routes were being pro gradually blocked, had began to look at the, the Atlantic, the circumnavigation of Africa, first of all, and uh, that brought to the, to the exploration also of territories that maybe were even known to before, but think about the Azores at this time, um, the canneries that had been explored since the mid 14th century. Um, so these lands were exposing the Europeans to to the idea that there was something out there, right? And actually, by the end of the 15th century, um, I mean something more, right? Consider that here Europeans reason just like uh, very simply, like there, there is a there is a world that is divided into these three continents and that centers around Jerusalem, and there are these given peoples that descend from the various biblical groups that are enumerated in there, and, and that, that's their world, right? Uh, a, a common misconception is that they believed the earth to be flat, actually since the 12th and the 13th century, it was, you know, coming back on the four, um, which had never actually even been forgotten as a theory, the fact that the, the earth could be round, right, and Columbus himself believed, of course, that the Earth was, was round, um, and um, in, in definitely the, what we're talking about now, definitely Renaissance civilization, was beginning to, to, to rethink in, in many ways, even in itself, its own roots, um, this great promise of the uh, revival of civilization, right, the sense of, of, of um, um, unprejudiced, um, unscrupulous way of looking at, at the world now that was taking over the, the you know, the almost completely dogmatic um, uh, approach to these topics, um, even in, with a pagan scent here and there, right, um, that can be easily observed even in the artistic or literary tastes. Um, of the time. Um, but these calculations on the distance were, were complicated because Europeans still were essentially studying these this things on the base of ancient, um, still of ancient geographical works. 
um, they were essentially trying to, to make this melange of sources that, just as Columbus did, as we will see now, to mm, reasoning by authority rather than, than just by direct experimentation. And this is naturally the picture that we get the most because those are the documents that survived um, more evidently that the, the the humanistic elite was producing at the time. But there was this very important and uh, overlooked substratum of of proper uh, seamanship and nat nautical uh, experience of, of the highest level that was taking place in here and that had already sensed that something more could be accomplished. Like the, the idea that, that um, the Asia was from the other side was even being now, um, you know, th there were many hints, right? There was this, this intuition that something was coming, being brought from the currents, like trees, things, that the idea that it was land from the other side, and and that maybe someone had even discovered it before, right? The, the Viking parenthesis is, as you know, is relatively short-lived, and nobody really cared. I mean, Columbus, um, as we'll see now, traveled as far as Iceland, seemingly, um, had this broader, uh, he perhaps even reaching Ghana, wh who knows, but this greater, almost global level, I mean, th this idea that there was something else outside Europe, it was pretty evident. Some say that the, the Americas had actually already been discovered in those years by certain uh, seamen that had gone there for fishing, had discovered it, but they hadn't had the investments to explore further, um, so it's actually still a very foggy enterprise, also because until Columbus didn't discover the New World, uh, the, the, the of official authorities, like the, the, the greatest scholars of the time, actually were, were in denial of the existence of, um, let's say, of the proof, at least, of certain assumptions, such as, especially about the distances, right? They weren't, they weren't denying that they could, the Europeans could reach um, India from 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 the passing west, right? But um, they like it, until something doesn't come on the fore so prepotently, um, like the discovery of a new land. Uh, there is also nobody actually attributing the due um, attention to it, right? And you can see it eventually now uh, um, in in the video when you know these explorers were saying, you know, please fund our expeditions because we think there is really something out there and, you know, the major states of the time said, you know, it's kind of a waste of money, right, until I, I, I see it, I don't see it, I, I can't, I can't uh, trust you, from the, I don't know whether you're right or wrong, but um, it's um, it's in this sense that we should also think of a, of a world that already at the time was way more open than we think. And Still, however, the Christianity was at the center of, of the ideal, right? In the, the concept, especially, even the same concept of Europe was being revived at this time, but it actually, and it do, um, you know, a lot, actually, to geographical explorations, but chiefly to, uh, I mean, Christian Europe as such, in front of the face of the Ottoman invasions, um, rather than, you know, this kind of, and, and and the discovery of the Americas wasn't even something so, uh, you know, enormously clamorous, probably at the time it was believed. Like, it was a real race, as we will see now, among the major European powers, but probably what really, well, like, what caused the greatest trauma, culturally speaking, as we often said, is, is, the, uh, is the Reformation, right? The the breaking of Christianity, the splitting on Christianity, that that was really what really marked that world um, at that time. Rather than ge geographical exploration, that even if, you know, were accomplished this, this huge feat, like at the time was not still seen in perspective like we do, like we do today. Um, and it was yet yet to develop in, in its greater importance, in its greater, in the realization of its importance. So mm, the, the there are these important texts that can be that were circulating uh, about as we re mentioned before Toscanelli and Martins that um, was known by s many cosmographers uh, cos cosmographers and sailors right um, 
Uh, Toscanelli was a Tuscan geographer. Um, Martin was a canon from Lisbon. And so also this international dialogue is very important, especially between um, Italy and the Iberian monarchies, right? Because many of the Iberian explorations were merit of the Italian captains, crews, ships that were, were all in service of Iberian monarchies when they accomplished some of their greatest feats. And this is also, however, uh, a, a broader picture, right? We can find, for example, on, on the back of a manuscript of the Historia Rerum Ubique Gestarum of uh, Aeneas Silvius Piccolomini, um, the, the that had belonged to the to Columbus, this um, this text of the correspondence between Toscanelli and Martins, right? Um, so, so that there was such a uh, a great enthusiasm behind these ideas, at least among those who you know thought could also profit from that, because it was really also a huge economical. Uh, interest that pushed for further research, not not just the the enactment of 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 the of the explorations proper. And so the biographical informations on Columbus are not always uh, completely certain, right? He was son of a Genoese merchant. He was, he was very likely born in the same within the same Genoese Republic. Ligurian was his mother tongue. And by cooperating with his father, he had entered, but soon, at the service of um, all a series of other merchants, like working for Vum, he, um, you know, when he was still very young, acquired this very solid experience as a sailor, right? He visited, in fact, Spain, uh, Guinea, uh, England, and he ended up, uh, between 1478 and 1479, to establish himself in Portugal, where he, uh, by the way, married the daughter of uh, another Italian from Piacenza. It was not a maritime republic, but still was still into, he was actually a, an explorer and a geographer, um, Bartolomeo Perestrello, right, that had become, uh, on behalf of the Portuguese, governor of Porto Santo on the island of Madeira. And the interest for cosmography and the idea that the Asian coasts were not too far from the European ones, actually, um, especially stamps for, for Colum within Columbus in, in this specific journey, right? Columbus was studying the ancient uh, geographers, but at the same time he was like mm, interviewing all the various sailors that passed into these and the cities, and he collected all these legions about the the western islands as well, because there was full of consider be uh, you know next to to this you know proto scientific. Still, we're not you know we have to wait the 17th century to have a proper scientific method. Yeah, this times everything was very very empirical. We have seen also there was a lot of reasoning by authority. Right, but there were also lots of legions, right? So knowledge was believed also in, in, in different ways in the way we do, right? It was full of, of stories about these wonders that existed, not just in the East, but actually in the West, right? Or b better, passing through the West, right, in, in, in Asia. And, and the same discoveries of the canneries of the Azores had, you know, demonstrated <laughs> this possibility. Right, um, and um, so in 1488, um, he also learned of the writing of Toscanelli and Martins, and this strongly reinforced his belief in the possibility of reaching Asia, passing through the Atlantic. So quite soon, Columbus began to pursue this idea, right, uh, crossing, pointing towards the west rather than. Uh, getting to the east through all this long and risky circumnavigation of the African continent, right? You know, many, many sailors didn't come back from this stuff. If you look at even, you know, how Columbus himself crossed the Atlantic, right? I, I don't know if you've ever seen the caravels and the cog, that those are, you know, very tiny things. And he 
he he passed through those things through a, a stormy Atlantic in winter, right? And just think what what that means. And think in this sense, this is probably one of the single most important things you have to keep in mind. Think about the determination of these people. I mean, this was not just trying something at a distance or in laboratory. This this meant that you had to go there yourself towards the unknown, right? Uh, towards what you really d had no clue of. Right, uh, we we know more about uh, about Mars today in the function of going there than what the Europeans knew at the time of reaching Asia through the Atlantic. Right, at least today we know what, what what's that about. Right, it, it's difficult. We we're probably close to it, but we 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 know what what it's about. This is really a leap in 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 the darkness, in the unknown. And it takes a, an enormous guts and determination to to seize this. And and, and let's yeah, let's state this, as we will see, Columbus was actually a very intriguing and um, you know kind of an entrepreneurially mi minded person. He was unscrupulous. He was also ferocious um, in, in many ways. But think in this regard, aside from the sheer economic interest in itself but the the intellectual uh, you know pride in in accomplishing um, an enterprise like that right it was really a, a huge clash of ideas of ideologies right it, the, these people had worked for, for a lifetime to demonstrate theory right that is as we will see now that Columbus calculated what the distance should have been and the interesting thing is that he was even wrong Right, and not only that it was wrong as such, because of course we know it was very different, but that actually the the let's say mainstream, if that's not a proper word, but the scholars of the time um, actually uh, corrected him, and they were right. I mean, to to our geographical knowledge today, we we know that uh, it was available a better geographical understanding already at the time of what Columbus was trying to demonstrate, because he, he was, however really convinced of it. So you you got to give credit to this person that it wasn't just right the the glory the the unscrupulousness etc it was a matter of um also th of having a different vision of the world that in a time like the middle ages in which we still are is is an enormous deal right there are many legions and stories like that are actually very close to to certain scientific debates we still make today, um, and that are actually coming mm, fortunately on, on the fore also in our popular culture. That is, you know, how many things we were told that were you know laughed at, and all of a sudden it seems that instead that they they may be effectively true, right? That there is all a very fascinating philosophy of science that studies even how the, the resistance of such theories. The, the 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 controversial fact is that Columbus was even wrong, for his own time standards, and yet that's the reason why he accomplished what he did, right? That also should make us reconsider in terms of you know civilization achievements. What you know what what's the weight also of the sheer scientific evidence? Instead, what's the one of of morality, like of of determination, of belief, of having you know a, a character of some kind. Right, that is not necessarily showing you, like in this case, that there were so greatly, you know, just positive intentions behind. But there was definitely a, a, you know, a motivating factor without which we we would have not had what happened. You know, the Americas would have been discovered anyway sooner or later in those in those decades. But the the point is. Um, it happened the way it did, and this had a massive political impact because only the fact that Columbus was operating on behalf of Spain um, was a big deal. It could have been Portugal, actually. Um, it could have been even France or England, right? And uh, that would have changed the history of, of the world, right? For a mere uh, person that operated, as we will see now in this context, in these courts, trying to uh, the, the most intricate political plots to to be funded for for this expedition right um so 
Columbus, how, how did he develop his theory? I mean, how, what did he believe he, he would have gotten through in terms of distances in, in, during the crossing? Well, basically putting together in a rather confused way information informations assumed uh, from uh, Pliny, uh, Arab geographers from uh, A.E. and from Piccolomini that had written, uh, you know, A.E. was a, a French astronomer, uh, Piccolomini was the same. Uh, Pope Pius, Pius the second, you know, uh, so mm, mm, a year was from the beginning of fifteenth century. Uh, so you see here even the the picture we're talking about uh, authors of, of different kinds, right? Of Frenchmen, of, uh, of Italians, of, of Portuguese, and people also with a relative mm, political and socioeconomic background that yet were toying around with the, with these ideas, but we in kind of a common way from different perspectives that also helped in this sense. Think about the dialogue, the epistolary exchange. How much in this sense it's a, an exchange of opinions of of different ideas of view in this this point. So Columbus had come up with a let's say coherent cosmographic system right that however was characterized by macroscopic mistakes right for example he believed that the earth was much smaller than in reality and he calculated the length of the equator to roughly 30,000 kilometers right so it's roughly one fourth of its effective length right so um, and he thought uh, for this reason that actually reaching the islands of Chipang that, that is of Japan um, according to Marco Polo that was how it was called at the time uh, would have been enough uh, from the Iberian coasts um, a journey of only 5,000 kilometers while the actual distance between Europe and America is of 20,000, right? So this is a, an important misassessment that, that actually triggered Columbus' determination to accomplish the crossing, and this is very important. And he first turned to the King John II of Portugal, because the Portuguese were the ones who were more involved in this kind of enterprises. They the were actually the first ones who, to build a, a colonial empire, right? Also, so kind of the, kind of the earliest to, to fade eventually, but uh, they, they were path openers in this regard, quite importantly. So, so that was the monarchy that Columbus had seen as more promising for founding um, an, um, an expedition like he wa the one he was em envisaging. Um, and however, the Portuguese sovereign, um, actually he, he listened to him in the audience, but he was advised by his counselors to, to actually deny, right? He preferred to pursue the, the traditional um, oriental navigation towards Asia, that is, trying to doppel Africa, right? Uh, that, was, that was still like the, the, the Cape of, of Good Hope that was yet to be done. That happened in 1497, if I'm not wrong. And um, also that probably didn't see fit to back um, a, a stranger, right? A foreigner whose mm, pretenses were maybe excessive, right? That's why Columbus eventually... Um, uh, arrived in, um, went to Spain in 1485 with his son Diego and he began to knock insistently at the door of the uh, Los Res Católicos door, right? Um, that at this point were, as you know, the uh, Isabel of Castilla and Ferdinand of Aragon, they were, you know, they, they achieved this dynastic um, union of the of the two major Iberian monarchies and at this time were actually committed in this war for the conquest of the last Arab Emirate in the Iberian Peninsula, the one of Granada. So it was a very important moment and um, they were a major power on the rise. Like the, the Union of Castilla of Aragon had brought on the foreign, the European political uh, picture, uh, literally a giant, right? And that's, um, you know, the, of naturally the, 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 the Spanish Empire in, in, in the Americas would, would uh, extend considerably the capacity of this, this power, but uh, already at the time was really a, a massive power to be reckoned with. Um, and um, Columbus didn't limit himself to offer his thesis and his good offices to to um, demonstrate um, actually the 
the correctness of his calculations. He, with the years, he had grown skilled in this, um, in in acting as this true um, preacher of the necessity of reaching the Far East Asia. Right? It wasn't just an economical thing uh, in his in his way of. of proposing the idea in order to reach the treasures of Japan and of China, but also uh, in this greater um, design, right, uh, greatest project to persuade the great Khan of the Mongols that he believed at the time to be still the emperor of China, even though the, the Mongols had lost the, the government in that country from more than a century, right, to unite his forces with the ones of Christian Europe in a crusade that would have finally crushed uh, Islam and given back the, uh, the Jerusalem to, to the Christians. So this was very important uh, at the time, and it reveals also the, the political skill of Columbus in, 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 at, at, this, uh, at this point, because the, the Spanish monarchy was naturally, uh, you know, it was founded largely on the Reconquista ideal, right? This were ultra Christian, we could say. Um, uh, at the time, it doesn't make much sense. But I mean, in the Iberian political, military, and even social culture, I mean, the Reconquista had been uh, had been all everything had meant really everything. The whole the whole horizons of Spain were were concentrated at this point in given uh, this full you know uh, completion to the Christianization of the peninsula, even with hideous measures like the, the ones of the Limpieza de Sangre with the expulsions, not just of the forced conversions of the Muslims but also of the Jews that in fact fled Spain also with some degree, but it, also in this sense we should see it mostly for what it meant for, from a real political compaction of those kingdoms right, for example it was full of Jews in at the court of um, of the Res Catholicos, the same mother of Ferdinand of Aragon was 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 Jewish. Actually, the confessor of, of uh, Isabel was, was had been a the cardinal, of, uh, had been a, a, a Jew himself. I mean, uh, it, it's very fascinating uh, to look at late medieval Spain because it makes you realize also how complex this system really was. We make some we made some video about this, but this. Gluing factor, right, uh, was Christianity. It is a strong alliance with the Pope, right? The Los Reyes Catholicos had strengthened, actually, the, very tightly this relation with Rome. Actually, this, this was true since a very early age, right? Since the times of the Kingdom of the Asturias, when the Muslims were about to, 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 to swallow the, the whole peninsula. Um, in, in that later time, to actually establish the tribunal of the Inquisition it was enormously important from a political and institutional point of view in Spain, um, because it was basically the only, um, you know, all-encompassing you know, of all the communities of of, of Iberia, um, was the only central tribunal, right? Because all the other communities would work with one own, uh, one's own with. Therefore, the, the the even the dynastic union, as you know, didn't actually bring to the fusion of Castilla and Aragon. There were still something split. So, the 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 Spanish monarchs were trying to to centralize as much as they can to, and and this uh, was was a help that the the also with papal politics was being um, sought quite intensely. So it was a very deep setting of of um, you know a, a different sum of reasons. Also. Always consider that around Spain and even Columbus in this regard, aside from you know the, the ugly things that happened like all over history, the, there is a black legion objectively, right? That there is historiographically speaking in many countries of the world the idea that you know the, the, the Catholics in general in these powers, especially Spain at this time in this kind of eventually hegemonic plan that he had on Europe um, after the you know with the, the Italian wars and the creation of the Spanish Empire that in you know where, where the sun never faded right because it encompassed the world war uh, uh, wars by Charles V at least allegedly so um, it was you know depicted like the grotesque dark oppressive you know the, the inquisition the inquisition for example one one of, was one of the most guaranteeistic um, tribunals out there. Right was basically the only tribunal out there who actually uh, recognized all the due rights to the inquired that that put everything you know very, very transparently. Uh, other tribunals out there, even secular ones, weren't weren't like that. 
right? Um, the, the position boosted actually even things like literacy, helping uh, uh, the poor. Uh, there was a, a benefit in, in those times that people wanted, like that these institutions were actually required by the people, right? It's a, it's a very different, difficult thing, uh, thing to say in perspective, especially from people that have been raised with the modernistic, pro progressistic ideas that uh, completely misrepresent all we know at this point historiographically about history on those times um, but um, uh, once again the, the the intelligence of Columbus in this regard uh, is is was, was astonishing because it was really um, a, a great political problem right um, um, the the so pushing for as we will see now and pushing for this enterprise like the, this the 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 reaching the, uh, of reaching Asia from 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 the West uh, would have, according to Columbus, gained to Christianity all the people of her. Just think about this too, right? That this world project was effectively to Christianize the, the entire world to surround to surround eventually Islam and to extend Christianity and uh, hopefully a universal empire, which the medieval still believed in at this point uh, over over the, the earth. Um, and and there were also these you know um, kind of tales and coincidences and exoterisms that he he used like the fact that he was called Christophers that is he who, who who carries Christ right and just like the saint the anonymous saint in fact that according to the legion had carried Jesus from one um, uh, bank um, to another of uh, a swollen river. Um, so in, in this long negotiations with los uh, res catolicos, these heterogeneous aspects of Columbus' character had the quality of actually emerging. Right, he revealed himself at the same time a dreamer, uh, an intriguer, a mystic, um, definitely uh, a climber. Right, um, he he was unscrupulous as we have seen. And his personality also mm, triggered this, this strong sympathy of the Queen, Isabel of Castile. And on the contrary, it irritated all uh, a group of mm, cautious counselors of the King Ferdinand of Aragon that were actually worried for the high costs of the prospective enterprise, right, and and also for the excessive demands of Columbus that insisted that he had, he would have mm, had to be recognized the title of governor of all the lands that he would have eventually discovered and conquered for the sovereigns of Spain, um, and uh, also a uh, very important quotas, a very high one actually, of the riches that he that would have been found in these new lands, right. And finally, but not least importantly, that at, under the light of the Ptolemaic cosmology that was prevalent at the time, it seemed actually that Columbus' ideas were scarcely plausible from a scientific point of view. And this was an enormous deal, because here science is not just like today, where you, you know there is a free community. I mean, everything was constantly under the control of the church, of the major institutions, of the universities, there were um, organizations of enormous power. Like un universities um, were all uh, tied very closely to royal policies. They had all their own um, political agendas. So, it, I mean, you can argue that not much has changed from 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 today in some ways, but definitely it, it, it's a different it's a different situation. We can't compare. And the the interesting part of this story is that there was a commission of scholars um, that gathered in Salamanca, well, one of the most important universities in Spain, that accurately examined the theses and confuted them one by one, right? So Columbus' theses were debunked one after another, right, on a, on a scientific base for what scientific meant at the time and Today, as we were saying before, we actually have the possibility to check how the scholars of Salamanca were uh, relatively to the objective 
truth of the asset of the continents on, on the terrestrial surfaces, as we know it today, much more accurate than Columbus himself. Now, this is very, very important because, as we will see, Columbus never, uh, eventually never denied his ideas. He, he died believing firmly that, first of all, what had, he had discovered was Asia, right? And that also, the, 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 you know, all, all his geographical uh, calculations were, were correct, scientifically speaking. Um, but what, what they were both wrong about, of course, it was that um, uh, at the time, uh, they, they ignored the presence of a continent, <laughs> Right, uh, intermediate between Europe and Asia, right? Uh, two continents, if you want. As a matter of fact, if you split the Americas, um, and that um, is, it, it was not actually far from the point from which um, Columbus believed that th those were the, the coasts of, of Asia itself, right? So um, this detail, apparent detail, actually made a, a huge difference because would have also for a, still for a long time maintained the misunderstanding, right? Columbus, as we have seen, as, as long as he lived, never never admitted his, his, to have been wrong with his calculations and that those lands were part of the Asian continent. So, the, the word, after the first session of Salamanca, the um, hopes to be financed by the Catholic kings for Columbus were very exiguous, right? He, however, put in motion all of his resources and, and acquaintances, such as certain uh, Spanish Franciscans who were very influent at court, uh, also the dukes of Medina, of Sidonia, and of Medina Celi, and also the Italian Alessandro Geraldini from Norcia, who was the preceptor of the sons of, of the king, um, to, in order to, uh, I mean, to induce the, the, the sovereigns to, to help him. And at the end, he managed that, right? Uh, there was the second uh, session in Salamanca. He was called again. And basically, he was, you know, uh, his theories were, were accepted. And on April the 17th, 1492, was signed the Convention of Santa Fe, uh, through which were granted, among other things, to Columbus, the titles of Admiral, uh, vice Roy and the governor of the lands that if he would have discovered and conquered. So, famously enough, on August the 3rd of 1492, from the port of Palace, three ships of, as we were saying before, modest size, right? Two caravels and one cog that were, that were, was slightly larger, armed with... Um, Partly Spanish and partly Florentine capitals. This is important as well. Um, and um, famously also named the Nina, the, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Uh, set fort, right? Uh, and f in the Atlantic. And on October the 12th, Columbus reached uh, in sight of an island that he identified at the time like the territorial avant posts of Japan, right? He discovered Japan. Um, in that the local, the natives, right, um, called Guanani. Guanahani, actually. Um, and, and that he baptized in the name of San Salvador, right? So, the saint, savior. And um, the identification of this land is actually uncertain. Right. Um, it's today we tend to believe it was the Watling Island in the Bahamas, and the crossing was difficult. Right. There was this situation. That there are many anecdotes on on Columbus crossing, uh, including the fact that there was there was about to be a mutiny because on his diary he registered the fact that he had gone past. Um, he is the number of, of miles that he counted, right? Uh, he had passed the 5,000 kilometers, and the crew was starting to, you know, to to grow a whole style, and seemingly it was a mutiny, and a compromise was reached. Um, in, in terms like, if in, in the range of three or four days we don't see land, uh, we will come back, 
right? And just think what it means. I mean, to get there, these, these were f uh, traveling from essentially um, uh, two more two months and a half, right? And, and think all the fear. I mean, the fact these people were risking their lives in the middle of the Atlantic, knowing to the, the unknown. Right, we are people who have grown with the confidence, with the security of looking at satellite or maps and saying, oh, I live here. Right, it can make you freak out rightfully the fact that we are just a dot suspended in, 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 in space, right? Um, which is pretty disturbing, but at least on Earth we know almost completely what the hell is on the face of it, at least. And uh, these people had no clue, right? It could be like. Uh, these people had surely read the Dante, you know, at the end of, of Ulysses, right? They also went to hell for having challenged, having crossed Gibraltar Strait and having tried to, to travel towards um, what would be, was identified at the time as Sri Lanka, essentially, and, and the, 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 the Eden, right? Um, and um, because they had dared to challenge the orthodoxy, this was a... a, a a radical and, and violent challenge to to authority, right? To at least to a set of of, uh, of an establishment actually also that backed those theories, and that uh, now Columbus was discovering to was proving to be to to be wrong, right? Um, um, the mm, Let's say the other interesting aspect of this story is that how, yes, that after the the mutiny of the uh, he they this the, the sailors began to fish certain fresh flowers and other they saw certain animals. There, there were birds, like they even changed route at one point because they they saw birds passing through. He said towards the west or towards southwest, and they followed them. So, they, so thinking that they would go, they would lead them to land. And that's where they they finally enter inside. Allegedly, they they first met uh, with fires, right? Of, of the people who lived there, actually. And then uh, the day after, uh, they 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 saw land, right, in this place that we don't really we don't really know it precisely, but was probably the Waitling Island. And uh, today, I, I don't want to talk about the story of the, the various exploration. I mean, the expeditions, because Columbus went there four times, right? And they weren't very successful expeditions, to tell it all, right? Um, he, he reached uh, Cuba uh, that he identified with Japan proper, uh, and then Haiti, and that, that is the island of Hispaniola, as it was called by him, that he thought it would be China, right? So... Yeah, I mean, I know it, it sounds messed up, but think of what it means. I mean, they, they, even discovering these places in, in the first place, right? And, um, and literally, because this continent was was not known, right? And even the the, the European knowledge of the Far East was was you know fairly fairly scarce after all. So um, he the, the obvious thing was. You know that had brought the 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 Spain to invest in in the expedition was bringing back spices, um, precious textiles, precious stones, right, gold, and uh, slaves. Um, and he came back with, with a few of these. Um, and he was even accused famously of, um, you know, the, 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 there's a, a recent discovery from 2006, if I'm not wrong, of this process of this hearing is that you know according even to the same to the same crew, he had, uh, you know, uh, abused of people, the, you know, some horrible stories, actually, of violence. Um, and um, he, even against the same crew, I mean, not just against the natives, the seemingly were were treated pretty harshly and massacred um, and enslaved, but also, I don't know, there was a, a man accused of, of, of being a thief, having stolen, I don't know what, from, from the curia mage, and he had his ears and, and nose cut and sold as a slave, I think, I presume among the, the natives, in fact, because <laughs> it's not there were many other people there, except them, um, and the, um, so the, this is all a story that has been, I don't like to discuss because it's like bringing to, to, to explain now the criticism of, of you know, how the Columbus figure is, is is seen today by certain historiography and why there are conflicting views and, and essentially it's just a use that we're making of this figure um, for reasons that have to do essentially with 
our own society of the time and most of the times completely failing to, to realize that we're talking about 1492 not of 2000, 2020, right? And um, which, which has nothing to do with justifying the, the atrocious crimes that were committed. The word, it's simply the realization that the world was was like that l by at large, right? And, and then also the, the same fact that the Spanish at this point, in, in maybe for, for pol internal political reasons, of course, also decided to, to actually arrest Columbus during his one of his uh, travels as well to be brought in chains into Spain, um, but is is the proof even in later times where where uh, where the continent was being uh, was being extensively colonized? I mean, the Pope, um, the Emperor Charles V, were countered pretty energetically all those uh, you know crimes and misdeeds that the conquistadors were carrying out there because that that had become literally the Far West, like creating f thieves in this new land and doing what what the hell the hell they liked because who could come back right in. and the, the the creation of um, you know also of the the local countries eventually how they they were born in the modern age um, from the European colonization is it, it, a very long complicated process but one day you know if you start talking if we start talking about modern history we, we could enter in, into the topic we, we don't have to do it now but to, to picture this as you know the evil Westerners that that, that that's rubbish that just just garbage right aside from the fact that uh, Native Americans, like all the other, literally all the other humans in the world, everywhere, were rapers, murderers, uh, enslavers. Um, they were some of the most wild and ferocious uh, cultures. The Europeans were just more advanced, right? So they were more successful at it, right? Aside from illnesses, yes, they, they massacred a freaking lot of people in most ferocious ways, but what did others do, actually, at the time? Right. Uh, this is not a way of condoning it, but if we, we our story is okay, let's erase this, the memory of these people because the just the word violent is like what what would remain of civilization, which is violent by definition, anthropologically speaking. Um, the the best thing we can do, in my opinion, is to to read the historical fact by by acknowledging the the atro the, the most atrocious crimes that were committed in these events, but observing the, the good that lays within it and this means you have you have to celebrate them but you you have to realize that if you are a better person today is also because history passed through those things i mean passed through people that that also were legitimately shocked and traumatized by these events and recognized within the same european culture that that there had to be a, a positive um a, you know, peaceful and 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 constructive way of dealing with the situation, which usually speaking, humans are not very good at. Right? It, it, they they are devoid, especially of a central direction, of an order, uh, of a system that can impose itself in turn on violence. Right? And that and that's the uh, the ultimate thing. So, but as we were saying before, that that's not the point. Right? The the achievements of Columbus, like the achievements of any person who literally changed the world for, through his uh, you know, perseverance and 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 commitment and energies and risking his own life quite easily, right? Uh, are uh, an inspiration and a model for the history of civilization. And we detach them from the the person in itself that was surely a ruthless and unscrupulous uh, individual, but that also displayed, however, some form of. Uh, of constructive thought, right? It wasn't all a, a butchering party. There were peaceful relations. There were ways to accommodate things. And we can't really um, read this whole thing as a like a just as a horror story that we should close the history books for, right? Um, although the history of humanity largely is, right? So you have two options: either not studying any history or, or studying these things anyway. And there's not much you can do. Um, at this point, but um, I, I phrased it poorly because today was reasoning about it. It had much better point to the question. But aside from this, um, and this, um, let's say, there was the realization. This, this is striking. Oh, the idea of the existence of a new world, right? Um, as as we have seen, Columbus as viceroy and as governor wasn't particularly, uh, you know, fortunate. 
he didn't uh, know, for example, how to maintain discipline among Spanish colonists. He committed these atrocities against natives, um, and he was also accused of looting, etc. And in when he came back to Spain in 1504, he was kept away from the court, and especially after the death of Isabel, that had, you know, protected him. Um, he was definitely depreciated, right? He died in Valladolid in 1506. And, um, and since from since the first years of uh, followed to the great discovery of Columbus had been clear, right, to er everybody, but him that the lands touched by his vessels were not the ones of Asia, but the ones of of a, of a new world. Um, among Christian powers, uh, you know, broke out this race for the appropriation of the trans-oceanic lands. Uh, and these powers were especially Spain and Portugal, because they were not just from a geographical reason, banally, but the, the, simply because they, they had um, they, they, they were the most predisposed countries from the, the ways they had invested into maritime business and certain con, you know broader uh, political uh, reasons and connections also to you know the, the, with the with the Mediterranean and what was going on there that that had the means to reach uh, and to to occupy the new land. And at this point it was a ferocious struggle so much that Pope Alexander the Sixth, the Borgia Pope, had to intervene with the bull Inter Cetera that proposed this vertical line of uh, separation, let's say known as in, in with the Spanish term of Naya, um, east of which the future, uh, you know, the, the lands that would have been discovered in the future would have gone to the Portuguese, right? Um, that were tendentially, as we've seen, more interested in the eastern navigation towards the, I mean, towards the, the eastern route, in fact, toward, uh, around Africa and to India. To the west, to the Spanish, and with the Treaty of Tordesillas, uh, that uh, that corrected in 1494 such proposal, the Naya was fixed at 370 miles, roughly, west of the Azores. Right. So, here, at least directionally, were laid the basis for the colonization of what today we know chiefly um, Latin America, because of, you know, the Romans, Iberians. And um, and instead, uh, and and that's for example the the coasts of Brazil were discovered in 1500 by the Portuguese Alvarez Cabral, famously. Um, that um, in in force of the Treaty of Tordesillas was colonized by the Portuguese, right? Because it was east of the of the of the vertical line, um, while the rest of the a Latin American subcontinent would have been invested by the Spanish colonization. So in the meanwhile, in 1497, the Venetian, um, he was actually born in, in Gaeta, it was a, in, southern, in southern Italy, but um, what is known as John Cabot, Giovanni Cabot in Italian, um, at the service of England, interestingly enough, because the English were rightfully, you know, interested in their dis in these discoveries as well, had come in sight of the coasts of Terra Nova, right? So, uh, thus giving, um, you know, start um, to the chapter of the explorations of Northern America. Um, in concerning the name of America, in fact, uh, as we know pretty well, this comes back to the Florentine. Amerigo Vespucci, that in 1502, exploring the South American coasts for on behalf of the of the Portuguese king, right? So you see all of these Italians from coming from places not even from that were of maritime powers, but or at least not more than much, like Florence, for example, were. Um, were at the service of Iberian monarchs, right? Uh, because simply these people, there was plenty of Italians of all these, poor, um, you know, Iberian ports that there were, that were Italians were basically made their living regularly on cartography, uh, as not nautical scientists, um, and all of this stuff that that were concerned the seamanship and 
um, and 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 there were explorers or if, and sailors them, themselves, right? Even their ships sometimes, and so Vespucci basically reinforced with certainty the the idea that such lands couldn't belong to Asia, right? This was a, a brand new land, at least from the European perspective, and. And, and it was for in this uh, for this reason that in 1507 the German geographer Martin Waldse Müller, in one of in one of his treatises, entitled America, right? That is the land of Amerigo, uh, the new continent, hence the name of of America, and definitive proofs that uh, between. It and Asia, where the, there was another ocean, because this was also another problem. Um, yeah, okay, that you had figured out this was not Asia, but what, where was Asia then, right? Well, this was proven instead only in 1513, when the Portuguese Vasco Nunez de Balboa, uh, crossing the Panama Isthmus, reached the Pacific Ocean, right? And also when in 1519, um, Ferdinand Magellan our Portuguese crossed the strait that, in fact, took the name from him, right? Um, so, think for a moment this uh, this extraordinary broadening of the dimensions of the known world from the side of the Europeans, right? And that so that had this such huge impact that actually um, we call generally, albeit not univocally today. Uh, the beginning of the modern age proper, right? We talk about the modern age, but you want to make it coincide, like the fall of Constantinople, the the the, the end of the Hundred Years' War, um, and the uh, the discovery of the Americas the same year of the death of Lorenzo de Medici, uh, and the fall of Granada, um, uh, or I don't know, fourteen ninety four with the Wars of Italy. When when you want to make it start, well. Generally speaking, the idea is that with the modern age also begins this uh, this this broader dimension of European seafaring uh, activity that projects these powers far beyond uh, their their native land, and it began this page of colonialism that, of course, is uh, you know is a part of history we have. I think as a society to come to terms with in the sense that um, it, it's still so hotly debated that even if we haven't, right? And I'm not taking sides in here. As I was saying before, I believe that we should look at these things, if not in a traditional way, but at, at least giving, you know, realizing the, taking the good of history. Like you, you can, you can transform these events just in, in a demonizing object if you, if you, if you meet people who are so ignorant that they can't even realize what, what massive civilization ac accomplishments stood behind these achievements, right? And right in, in knowing history is not celebrating uh, murder and senseless, uh, you know, massacres of innocents, uh, but it's also looking at why, for example, that happened, what the natives were doing as well. Or even other f uh, pictures that are sometimes, um, you know, overlooked. For example, take the, the Islamic expansion during the the early modern age. Right? They they toppled the Christians. Like the Christians managed to convert these masses, especially of Native Americans, at that point. But really, the 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 religion that was expanding the fastest at that point was Islam in lands like Africa. And there is colonialism and slavery in there as well. Right? So. Looking at this thing in perspective is like being aware that largely uh, the history of, of mankind is really that that horrible, right? But once again, this is no reason for denying it uh, or in in denying its memory or or demonizing its memory or um, bringing people essentially to to forget about their past because there is a very powerful. Uh, political goal behind making people forgetting about their past that is not as most think just you know uh, you know a conservative thing right it doesn't hide uh, racism it doesn't um, hide um, you know uh, 
uh, anti-democratic culture. On the contrary, it makes you evaluate exactly what is important in politics, what is important in society, why wars are fought, what, what, what is that a, a civilization uh, you know, is capable of if you, don't, if you don't watch it. And if you don't know anything about it, that's the best recipe for committing the worst atrocities again and again. Right, always in a different way, but for this reason, still at atrocities. Right, and forgetting about history is is just uh, a crime against humanity, in my opinion. And, and denying the, um, especially the the value that stands behind these individuals that, for whichever reasons, were pushed by, had made a, a tremendous effort, like putting themselves. In, in on the four risking their lives, risking even their families, right? And many people died in here, right? Many of them didn't come back, right? This was a, even from from a merely geographical point, explorative point of view, th this was an amazing feat. Like think about all the naval engineering, the cartographical science, the mathematical studies that stood behind this thing. This was a, a huge, a huge accomplishment, right? Um, it was stemming from a world that was already much more advanced than what you know widespread prejudices still about the Middle Ages assume because this whole thing stamped as a civilization from the Middle Ages. The Renaissance is a product of medieval civilization, and that also you know were the the basis for what would come would come later right without these people, we wouldn't be here either. Maybe there would be other people, and who knows if they would have been better or worse than us, right? But here we are. So I think that finding out why and how that happened is a great challenge on its own and a great accomplishment, uh, culturally speaking, that evidently is, is largely forgotten, right? Because it, it, it takes a very few not to educate someone. You just don't have to do anything, right? It's much, much easier than educate someone. And and I, as you realize, I, I, I said also in many other videos, I, I'm not very optimistic at all, right? It seems like that we like to be kind towards each other at, at the point of pretending that our, uh, you know, all our world is fine, that our kids are doing well in school, that we are learning so much, we're progressing. I actually see a world that is growing uh, incredibly weaker, softer, more ignorant. I mean, the, the degree of scholarization in, in, in our countries, in the, in the most developed countries, is astonishingly low, right? It's still, yeah, it's still the better you can find in the world, but is that what you take pride of? That's more relativism. You, you should take absolute standards, and by absolute standards, our education is pretty freaking disgusting, right? We're, we're raising generations of goats who know absolutely nothing about all of this, and that disturbs me it disturbs me deeply right because the the gain the time of uh, several gdp points percentage of growth every year are over right not just because of the coronavirus or but the, it's it's a, an economical let's say not cycle but it, it, a trend at this point and therefore we cannot afford any more like the sense of you know everything will go better more or less anyway even if we suck no if we suck today we we can't produce one of the greatest strategies in the history of humanity and given these bases that's pretty likely to happen right given the 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 ignorance about history given this attitude of this selfish attitude of pretending that everything is due to you everything is that you 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 since you breathe, you must have, right? That 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 it doesn't work because if there is no one who works for you, um, provides it for you, you you die, right? You you will never get it, right? So, um, so we are pretty close to to the leveling at this point, and we we can't afford once again to reason as if history was just a privilege for the, the you know for the spoil, for those who, who can avoid not to, to do another job, right? History is the key for solving world's problems, in my opinion. And not just anecdotally, uh, anecdotally. I mean, the, the concept is that history is, is a teaching in political culture, in social culture, uh, in military culture, right? And I if you don't know about these things, you basically don't know anything about your world you live in. So where are you going to, to find this thing out? By speculating? 
what you wish. This is what is going on. Inventing uh, imaginative system, fantasy systems that completely mismatch the reality you live in, and that's the recipe for disaster. But anyhow, this is just my my usual rant. But I was gr- glad um, to talk about Columbus at least and this crucial part of the age of explorations, and we will talk about it also um, some other time. But for now, we we'll stop it here. Uh, I just hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it. Otherwise, do a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming contents. And for now, I thank you heartily for listening to me. I wish you a nice time and see you next time. Bye.